Discord meetup version question mark. I think this is the fifth one. Um, but I never know for sure because I don't pay attention. Uh, this week we'll be talking about whatever we want. <laughs> I'll probably go over the brief little updates that I made to uh, the M8 firmware and um, maybe give you guys a, you all a status report on where I'm at with uh, production stuff. If you're on my Patreon, you would pretty much know where I'm at. Uh, but yeah. How's everybody's week been? I'm tired. I'm very, very <laughs> tired. Yeah. But I'm, I'm in a similar position, but it's also the morning here. Yeah, I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty... Beat, beat up myself. That wasn't meant to be a roast, Mikey. You, you're allowed to be tired. Thank you. No, Mikey, you're only allowed to drink coffee, Coke. Yes, that's, that, that is true. You have a mate. Ooh, I could go for a yerba mate, actually. That sounds great. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, updates are... I'm working away on trying to get to a level where I'm comfortable starting the pre-order, which needs to happen pretty soon. So, anybody who wants a specific date, the answer is soon. Um, which I know is <laughs> not specific, but... Yeah. Yay. Soon. Could be a week, could be a year. Who knows? But uh, part of my struggle has been I started working on what's called a micro mod um, connector, which separates the brain, quote unquote, to the rest of the M8 unit. Uh, there's many reasons why I was doing this. I think I went over it before. Um, but in essence, while I was working on that, I went to go get the footprints for the some of the parts that I need. Um, and a footprint is basically the outline of the chip that I need to put onto a circuit board. And when I was doing that, I realized like two of the chips that I need are like nowhere to be found on the internet. And of course, this is all kind of related to um, chip shortages, uh, which I don't, I don't know if anybody's heard, but because of the pandemic and everything else, there's kind of random stuff that's not available. Uh, so going through that and hitting that giant wall, I realized I can't even make my own test board, let alone enough to make the units required for pre-orders. I decided to switch gears again and go with a similar setup to how the original beta units shipped, which is I just buy the Teensy board and they get mounted to the unit. Uh, the only disadvantage to doing this, besides um, how I produce, manufacture the units, um, is that it'll be USB micro instead of USB-C, which is what I wanted. Um, obviously, USB-C is better, but being situations as they are and being not a giant company that I am not, <laughs> I cannot, you know, have a good uh, idea of when to do pre-orders without having the plan in front of me. And the thing is with the Teensies is I could get them from directly from the manufacturer. I could get them from all of my normal sources. Like they're easy to find right now. And they have all the parts already on them that I need. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, I need to finish that board and get it manufactured and tested. And if that works, um, then I get a proper quote back from my assembly house and from there i could do pre-orders so it's been kind of a up and down week once i found out that i couldn't even buy the chips like i, I was just totally crushed because <laughs> i spent you know two days designing this board that's you know i don't remember how many pins 160 pin bga part it's you know a pretty significant design and i you know I go to try to just finish it and <laughs> I don't have the stuff. So it also kind of sucks because like I could have done this method months ago, but I was being hopeful that the bootloader would be released for me to use. And there's this other new fancy version that was, you know, rumored to come out. And 
everything has been like hitting brick walls. So anyways, at least I have a plan moving forward. At least those units will be able to be made and it's the current climate. And yeah, it'll be a cool unit regardless. So I'm not too worried yeah, about it. I, I appreciate the update. And I also appreciate the, the position you're in with the, the demand from, from all of us and trying to find solutions. I, I'm I'm inspired by your nimbleness, Tim. I think it's really cool. I think it's cool that you can change tacks uh, that that many times in a week to to find a solution. Yeah, I mean, uh, from my perspective, like I, you know, I've been doing development things, little things for people for 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 everyone for the last twenty years or so. Like everything I've done has been free, you know, um, and this is the first time like where I'm trying to make a product and take people's money, you know, sell this decent product to people. And like this whole situation to me is so awkward because I'm so used to just like, here's this thing I made, here's the source code, everybody have fun. <laughs> that it's, it's like, it's added stress to me on top of like dealing with the chip shortages or production run issues and all that stuff that, you know, it's taken me a little while because I'm kind of new to all of this, but I appreciate everybody's patience. On a side note, be, um, I also talked with, I have a design engineer that I contract work with um, to go over my work and to make things pretty because they're much better at it than I am. Um, and I mentioned to him, like, you know, if there was a solution to do type A, type, type B switching of the MIDI jacks. And they were like, oh yeah, there's, I just used uh, this one chip, blah, 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 blah for something entirely not related to MIDI, uh, and it's perfect for this solution. So the production units will have a type A, type B um, software configuration, which is nice. It's something I wanted to do um, on pre-production stuff, but I just didn't have the bandwidth to try to figure that out and do the tests necessary. So it's kind of great the, that uh, I have that person. Type a, the type A to type B switching is a boon. It's like such a big deal, honestly. Yeah, I like it's it's so weird to me that I have like n now I have I think three pieces of gear that have type B, and I always thought of type A as being like finally MIDI Association or whoever like decided to make it a standard, and I figured that type A would be like the standard because it's or t type A would be the standard because it's like you know. A becomes before B, but the bottom line is all of these companies have developed their own, you know, uh, three point five inch millimeter MIDI standard, you know, and some people went with one method and other people went with another, and it's not like they could switch their product line because all of their previous gear uses this particular standard, you know, so it makes sense. Um, there should be more cables out there, I think, that just allow you to switch between the two like there's not really any products there's that one product by retro kits i think with the two jacks on it but other than yeah, that, retro kits yeah that's that's you know there should be more solutions i think to that problem anyways it won't be a problem for the production units of m8 because there'll be a little hardware chip in there that basically gates um you know it it flips the polarity on those two jacks so, yay. Yay, that's really cool. Anyway, um, enough about production updates. Uh, oh, and I'm also doing, there's uh, the Dirty Wave logo is going to be redesigned. Um, and I'm having some help behind the scenes to have that happen. And I've been kind of waiting to update the Dirty Wave website and such. Um, as well as social media accounts, etc. I've been waiting for like having the official logo and all that stuff. So that's kind of all in flux right now. The original like D looking weird shape thing was always supposed to be temporary, um, you know, because one fire at a time. <laughs> but I never really necessarily liked it. It was just simple and it worked for the moment. So that that will get a get an update. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, also, we I released uh, the next version of the firmware. Um, 
let's see. There was a. I added stemming stem rendering, which is slow. Um, you have to appreciate that it has to basically run through every track one at a time. So it's going to be much slower than just rendering the main output. But it's there, so you can let it run and um, it works pretty well. Uh, I did some FM synth op optimizations, um, which doesn't change the sound or anything like that. It was just some backend stuff that I realized it was it was a little heavy on. Uh, the macro synth plucked um, shape was monophonic, which it used to be, I think, two or three voice polyphonic, um, and now that's that's fixed. Um, as well, on the last stream, uh, I don't know if anybody remembers, but I was switching in between like chain and phrase, and like the title got all jumbled up, and I'm like, oh, it must be a problem with this current unreleased version I'm working on. And it turns out it won what wasn't that. It's always been a problem. If you were in live mode and you did the the option left right shortcut to to switch between tracks in the chain screen or the phrase screen, it would jumble up the title. <laughs> I didn't notice that until I did some testing. And finally, just the sample editor uh waveform. The waveform that's drawn to the screen has been cleaned up a little bit. But yeah. That's uh, the next version of M8 um, will be more tailored to um, things that are for the production units. So I'm planning on having a new MIDI mode um, for M8 to M8, uh, or maybe just MIDI messages, or maybe a higher higher baud rate. Baud rate. I'm getting an echo back. Getting an echo back. Blooms. Blooms. And uh, thanks. And some help text. Uh, watching uh, that video that uh, Ben did a couple weeks ago or a month or two ago um, on his live stream, I realized that we need to have those uh, some kind of visual feedback of what the shortcuts are that are available and an easy way to access that. So that stuff will be added. Um, I don't know when, but it'll be before the production units ship. So that way it's a little bit more friendly to use when people have them. Yep. Does anybody else have updates besides me? <laughs> uh, uh in case I, I, I'm gonna shameless self promotion, um, in case you guys didn't know, uh, last night I did a stream, a, a, a live stream, like rave. Uh, where I use the M8. Um, if you wanted a good example of how or how one could use them in a realistic live scenario, I encourage you to check it out. I posted it in clips. Hopefully the VOD is still up. I don't think they're planning on keeping the VOD. And then, uh, so uh, if it's something you may be interested in, check it out. Uh, I had a lot of fun. Um, I was very, very fortunate to have... Uh, my friend Boa Constructor uh, lend me his unit, so I was able to use two of them. Uh, and I tried to kind of showcase the devices by um, using two instances of Touch Designer so that you could see what I'm doing in real time. So it's, it's, it's worth checking out if that's something that you want to maybe learn or um, you know, you're just wondering how, how could I use this in live. Um, you should check it out. I just watched it uh, about an hour or two ago, and it was pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I just had the two M8s um, going into a MIDI merger, sending the MIDI signal to my Avalon baseline, and that's basically it. And then it looked some like external your, pedals. It looked like your Avalon was then routed into that new delay unit you got. Yep, sure was. Yeah. Um, I was using a Zoom H6 as the uh, as the uh, the mix the mixer for my, my setup. Um, normally, uh, if I was trying to go, you know, ultra minimal, um, I'd probably just split uh, the signal from like the the headphone out on the, the Avalon into both of the M8s and work it that way. Um, there, there are definitely other ways to do it. Um, obviously, my, my, my setup was a little flawed because uh, 
regardless of where I was crossfading between the two M8s, the the, the Avalon was always at max volume. So it's just like I'm moving into the other song and I have to like keep in mind to like stop the synth and stuff. So uh, that's definitely something I need to optimize. But uh, yeah. Uh, how was how was uh, the how was that mixed in? So uh, I have a Zoom H6. Oh. Uh, okay. So okay. yeah. So so uh, I had the the two M8s running into the little write-in crossfader mixer, the little battery-powered DJ mixer. Yeah. Um, and then uh, uh, RPM one hundred, so, I think. Yeah, it's really nice, uh, really transparent, good headroom. Uh, I was using that to to crossfade between the two M eights. Those go into the H six, and then I had my Avalon going into the pedal, into the other inputs on the H six, and then line out into my interface. What as um, opposed to using a standard mixer. Why did you not do something silly like split the? output of the avalons after effects and just pipe that into both m8s and then use i i, I totally could have i was being it, it was the, the answer is it was easier and i had and the cables are uh available uh <coughs> excuse me uh yeah i i just happened to have it already plugged in and set up and right. i was like yeah uh, uh but that, that's absolutely something i c could have done and i probably will do uh in a future setup it's cool that uh I always appreciate those live sets where um, you see the performer or what they're doing, you know, and all that stuff. I guess uh, with the pandemic and the shows that are happening, there's like a mixture, like it's either, you know, the musician or it's just like visual art, et cetera. They're all like awesome in their own ways. And I, I thought it was neat that you had the M8 screens kind of live streamed with the yeah. setup yeah i'd like to show a little bit of the magic because um i don't know you 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 can sit there and watch a dj you know doing stuff but you you can't really see their screens you don't really know what they're doing so it kind of makes it more interactive as opposed to having visuals i guess um I think what else if, about that i think if i was a dj i would just like live stream the uh the filter knob <laughs> exactly <laughs> perfect <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah uh and, and i also knew that there were a bunch of people who either had the m8 or were interested in it and uh or familiar with lsdj and it was cool to like they could see what i was doing and they were anticipating things happening which was cool um it made it very interactive and fun for for both myself and uh the people who were in the know i suppose you got to get that uh, FE in the chat before every drop. You know it's coming, you know? <laughs> is it FE or is it 7F or is it 00? Zero, zero? Zero, zero squad. Oh, zero, zero. <laughs> oh, that's a kick drum show. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, like, I, you know, one of the features I wish I could figure out how to do properly in M8 was, like, it'd be neat to have instead of a zero zero or an fe like it just to be smart enough to to have like a, a little symbol or arrows or something for the tracks that are just kind of waiting for their part to come in but i haven't quite figured out how i could do that and it's not as flexible as just using a phrase and chain so it may, might not be worth the effort it's just like a song would look so much cleaner if you didn't see all of the zeros or all of the fe's like filling out all of those extra rows I I think um I think Thomas was trying to figure something out with Nerdseek. A lot of people have made some suggestions in the forum. It's been a while since I've checked and so I don't know if it's if you ever came with a solution, but there were a lot of suggestions. So I'm really curious to see. I'm actually um I mean the easiest thing would just be to allow uh color options per chain, you know. Yeah. And then that yep. way you could set your chain zero zero or whatever it is to a darker color so it's not as highlighted in the song i i suppose you have bookmark you could just bookmark everything just bookmark every single <laughs> every single chain it would be a, a nightmare so much <laughs> tapping yeah yeah i don't know the pro i guess the problem with having like a filler chain that just knows how long to be is that only works for a particular type of song <laughs> yeah. yeah.
like if you have a song that uses different grooves and different chain lengths and all that, it would turn into a nightmare. Uh, yep. So yeah, I don't know. Something to think about. Or maybe I could have it smart enough that if you put a chain in the song and it only has commands in it, it would be a different color. You know? Something That's like that. That's a cool idea. That's or a cool scan thought. Ahead and yeah, just have chains that have phrases that have only that have notes in them be a different distinct color than ones that don't. That would probably solve that maybe. I I'm into the idea. I'd love to at least uh uh test it out. Yeah. See if it's not uh, a, a a UI nightmare. I think I think it it seems like a good idea though. The uh the only thing would be is like when you first create a chain in the song it might be weird, but I don't know. Still something to try out. The the only reason I would push against doing color options in chain is where would I put that in the GUI? as well as it just eating more memory. <laughs> so. I don't know. So should we do something with an M8 here? Suppose we should. Suppose we should or could. I don't um, know. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Uh, I uh, did not. Uh, mentally prepare for for this weekend. Uh, I was <laughs> so focused I. on last night. So uh, um, we did get some suggestions uh, from people in the Discord stream chat um, about things that we could go over um, either in more or again. Um, for example, um, breaks, wave tables, and what beverages to consume while using your M8. Um, <laughs> So uh, I, I think either of those would be a good place. I'm actually curious about the wavetable stuff. I have um, no experience with wavetable really out uh, beyond the wavetable synth of LSDJ, I guess. So, But I know uh, there's a method to importing your own wavetables and utilizing the sample engine. Is that right? For wavetables? Yes. Yes. Um. The idea with wavetable would be I mean I could I could try showing it but I need I need to find some wavetable samples. I'm looking to see if I have any currently. Uh maybe I do. I don't do know. you want me to send you one? I sure if you want, but it it takes me a while to transfer things back and forth obviously. Um looks like I do have some wavetables. I don't know what contain what they contain. <laughs> because it's been a while since I tested it. But the idea is uh, the easiest way to do a wavetable would be is if you have, like, if, if your file has more than one wave shape in it, it to be a number that is a power of two. So that way you could scan it using the sample loop offset. Um, I mean, th that's the idea. But since the sample loop, uh, uh, loop offset has... Uh, you know, its value range is basically 8-bit. It's 0 to 255. You know, you'd want to power 2 and kind of do your, your the math yourself or have it be 256 samples long and just that incremental change would um, select a different wave shape. But if you had like 100 or if you had like 64 wave shapes, what would be kind of cool is you could get in-betweens as well. You know, I don't know if that makes any sense. It looks like there was um, some wavetables dropped into the stream chat if you want to grab them. I will do that. I will do that if if you want to fill the dead air with saying something. <laughs> Those uh, wavetables are from uh, Kisto Onda from the Aves Man. What was that? Uh, those wavetables are from the Piston Honda uh, famous module from the service man. Oh, okay. I am transferring them now. Here, Here's my filler dialogue while you're getting things done. So, he hello everybody, once again. Um, what, what is, um, does anyone have any particular, uh, 
clips in the inmate stuff that the that they um liked in particular or can anyone just say them all or just me yeah good answer all of them that's the I, correct answer i'm here but i wasn't listening <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Uh, I I mean, my my voice basically is white noise to begin with, so it's I'm, I'm, it's all good. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was juggling the SD card around. Oh, good. I'll put in a vote for all, not really knowing, but I'll back you in. All right. It now seems that you you and Glooms um made the right answer. Good job. Okay. So I am now streaming my screen. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try the, these wavetables. I don't know anything about them, so this might be interesting. Or this might be terrible. Let's see. So the idea with wavetables, for those that don't know, is they're a sample, essentially, that has an oscillator shape in it. It can be uh, just one single cy cycle, or it could normally it's a set of different shapes inside the one file. Fail to load sample, but that these samples don't work at all. That's beautiful. Yep. I have some other wavetables in here though. I don't know what they are or where they're from. So let me try one of these and see what this is. That is just. That looks like just a single cycle or two cycles. Is that all these are? Yeah, I think the AKWF pack, which I also have, is just Singles. thousands and thousands of single cycles. What are these then? Yes, you need to, to load a bunch of them at the same time to scroll them. So uh, how how I would do it would be to have a bunch of cycles inside of a single file. Um, which I assume that's what these are, but it looks like I'm gonna have to try to convert them. I'm gonna switch screens to my main display. And I'm gonna launch one of these files and don't look at my stuff, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna open up uh No peeking. Yeah. Don't don't steal my secrets. <laughs> I'm gonna open Let's see, where did I put that? Downloads. Ooh, tracked it. Oh, I have to extract it. Give me one second. I'm going to open up the those files in a wave editor so I can see what they are. And maybe I could fix it in real time here. Where did it go? Man, I really need to clean my downloads folder. It's just riddled with things. Cleanish. Right. Let me open one of these up. And addition. A very old version of addition. I assume my screen is st still sharing. I'm not even looking at what I'm doing here. Uh, whoa. Yeah, that's what these are. These are a bunch of sounds in one file. That's pretty cool. So I wonder why it doesn't load. 16-bit mono wave file. It looks like it should load though, which is interesting. I'm gonna just resave this. Oh, I'm gonna batch convert all of them. How about that? Port settings, wave, mono, 16-bit. Yeah, looks okay. Run. All right. I'm going to try copying these again to my M8. So I don't know what was wrong with those files, but it, it didn't want to load, which is something I should investigate, because if it's basic... If it's just a basic file, I should be able to. Uh, MH should support it. Um, but I, I was having this conversation earlier today uh, with Leo, I think. And yeah, I think there might be some header issues with uh, MH's 
uh, ability to read wave files. So wave tables, factory wave sets. Right. Thanks for joining the meetup. I know I'm completely unprepared. <laughs> this week has been hectic. Let's see if this works now. Hey. Whoa. It's super quiet too. Hold on. Give it up for the F.E. <laughs> yeah, it's too loud. Is that too loud? Maybe that. No, that sounds just right. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is put this into oscillator mode. And oscillator mode. Uh, the reason being is because it'll disable the any interpolation that the sample the sampler might be doing when the sample loops. So I think normally if the sample is of a certain length, um, M8 tries, to, if, if you're scanning the file, it'll, M8 will try to zero center the beginning and end of the sample, which doesn't really work very well for oscillator shapes because then you're kind of destroying it. That sounds maybe right. Let me tune this there we go so it sounds like maybe there's 16 steps in there or so but what I could do here is say loop start. <laughs> I'm just messing with it now. But you get the idea. Yeah, it, wor it works pretty well. Um, I think our main problem there was, for some reason, there's probably some extra information in those wave files that M8 didn't like. Uh, that's probably another task I'm going to work on before the production units are ready, just to help um, those errors. And maybe make maybe make those errors more specific. <laughs> Instead of just saying failed, maybe it should say why. Uh, these samples also sound like they're uh, pretty low in pitch, like, or pretty high. Uh, what? How do I describe that? So they sound ver really uh, low quality as far as the uh, sample rate is concerned. But maybe it's because of the device that they're they were made for. Yeah. Let me do. I'm gonna. I'm going to assign an envelope to AMP as soon as I find it. There we go. And another envelope to cut off. And turn on the filter. You get the idea. <laughs> yeah, so I guess the keys were setting the play mode into OS. It might actually work fine in, in normal uh, play loop modes as well. Um, not quite. Uh, the other thing that OS mode does is it disables this um, start parameter um, and only, only just uses the loop start which is easier to explain if I drew a chart. But normally, what would, in a normal sample, your start position and your loop start position are at different points. 
and then obviously in an oscillator mode they wouldn't be so um, the start position and and the loop start are basically the same value in oscillator mode or osc mode osc pp is ping pong so it makes it one octave lower because it's playing the sample forwards and then backwards wonder if i try a different I'm trying the different uh, waves here. Well, that sounds terrible. <laughs> oh, I see. So it's just that one wave, uh, number one, that has kind of a lower or a high, higher, what do you say that? A lower sample rate, I guess. Yeah, I think the sampler is pretty cool at using it as a synthesizer as well as just playing samples. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, I've never really used it that way before, so that is something for me to try out. Yeah, uh, that's something I'm planning on doing too uh, with the production units is kind of finalizing some sort of default um, library that goes on the SD card. Um, and I assume I should make room for some um, some wave tables if it makes sense you could also make wave tables with uh stuff like uh serum allows you to export wave sets and as a wave file and literally load those right in which is pretty neat yeah it's really cool that's exactly what i was thinking just in compile the, a whole bunch in the stream chat i've put a link to wave edit which is a very cool free um, software to make edit and uh, download um, uh, wave tables oh that's neat. thank you for sharing yeah that's super neat i did not know of such things do you think it's possible to like jump in chunks of waves or is it only like per because um, now you're removing sort of a one sample at ins like moving one sample with LFO kind of. Oh, wait, could, um, you, could you explain this again? Sorry. Well, so like the LFO modulation was like moving the playhead, right? But is it possible to make it move in chunks more? Would that be maybe doable in a table? I guess? Yeah, yeah, you could use a table to do that if you wanted to jump this in chunks. Um, I just set I set an LFO to it because the LFO um, it allows you to go in between these numbers um, a little, so it has a little bit of smoothing to it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty rough to jump between waves, but <laughs> yeah, I guess. But yeah, you could you could very much do that, and if you have an even um, if you have an even uh, sample, like let's say it's um, let's say it's 16 different oscillator shapes in that sample, then you could use this first digit here as the sample selection. Um, and anything in between would be morphing between this sample and then the next sample, which is kind of neat. Um, it's, I think it's all about having like an even or a, a power two kind of uh, wave set. And then you could use like the loop command here to select which waveform you wanted. You know, it doesn't quite work with yeah, these samples, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's all very particular how it's like laid out. Uh, yeah. Do you think it would be, would there be like any idea to add like a specific wavetable player someday? Or, I mean, it's pretty neat to keep it as like a funky function of the sample playback though. Yeah, I think, I mean, if, if there are more features that should be added that are specific to that o oscillator type mode, then yeah, it definitely justifies a, a different synth with a different set of parameters. 
Um, and yeah, your uh, a real wavetable synthesizer has a lot more stuff it could work with, um, including like I noticed this when I was working on my port of uh, this is a port of Blitter synth. I, I said that before, which is a Max for Live synth I made a, a long time ago. Um, but in here, there's this uh, warp feature that kind of pushes the wave shape. Um, there, let me just. And I've seen that uh, I've seen that done in uh, wavetable synthesizers as well, which would be super neat to have. You know, it, it's almost a mix in between uh, this synth and the sampler is kind of the happy medium uh, for a wavetable <laughs> yeah. synth. Yeah, I think um, usually they call it a bunch of different things, but it, I mean, it, it's all, always kind of like face distortion-ish, like you right. something with the lookup face. Um, yeah. Like Ableton Wavetable, I guess, has a similar thing they called warp, I think. Yeah, I, I like... called mine warp uh, to match theirs because I thought it might oh, be yeah. easier to understand. But originally this was called, I think I called it bias because it shifts oh. the center bias to one direction of the phase oh yeah that makes sense i call it bend instead oh know. bend makes bend, <laughs> bend, bend works really well too yeah uh, but yeah there, there's a lot of neat functions like that um i guess this depends on like what you can push out of the processor in the end i mean having two oscillators and crossfading between them is sort of the obvious Mm. Uh, first thing to do which is always cool yeah there's certain there's memory there's uh SD card reading limitations, which mm -hmm. don't really come into play. It depends on the resolution of the sample, right? Because if mm -hmm. the sample is really, really short, like if we're only playing a snippet that is less than the the RAM that's being used for the, the sample, then it's not actually reading from the SD card because it's still in memory, if that makes sense. So, yeah. It, but, but if they're reading the same sample, would that make any impact or...? If I had it where it just split the RAM, that dedicated area RAM into two pieces, and those two pieces could fit into RAM, then that would work. Yeah, well, essentially, like if you have, um, say, that you also make this cross fading, uh, that's kind of what Wavetable, for those who aren't like familiar yeah, that's true. with uh, how it works, is like um, what's called usually like scanning in a Wavetable synth or uh, Wavetable index or whatever. Um, what it's doing is, I think most of them use two oscillators and crossfade between them. Right. And for each time you fade out one, you kind of, that, like, behind the scenes steps into the next frame of waves, or wave, the next, like, chunk. Yeah. So you get this, like, seamless crossfade between them. So right. essentially they're reading from the same uh, linear table. Um, you know it would be so. really an efficient way of doing that? This is getting pretty far into the weeds of <laughs> programming, but an efficient way to do this would be to utilize a special format of a stereo sample, maybe, where you mm. alternate each waveform between the left and right channels. So that way it's the data is interleaved. So you don't have to like look you don't have to scan two locations at the same time. You know what mm. I mean? <laughs> I don't know if that would actually um. work, but that would be probably a trick to do it where you just alternate each waveform between left and right. <laughs> but it would need a special <laughs> format that would be impossible for somebody to edit, which kind of yeah, sucks. Yeah. But Yeah, interleaved stuff is, uh, yeah, not the most user-friendly. <laughs> but it, it, it's, a, it's a very neat idea. Yeah. Yeah, I could, and that, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't take any horsepower away um, to do something like that. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, then you would need an application or something built into M8 that could, Take two samples, you know, but you wouldn't want not more than just two. So, yeah, I don't know. It mm -hmm. sounds like a, it, I would need to, or somebody would need to make a tool to make those files, which kind of sucks that it's not just native smart enough. <laughs> it's always an option, though. Yeah. The major, the, always the major limit with M8 has been reading from the SD card, streaming from the SD card. But that streaming offers, like, so many awesome benefits that it's just worthwhile to keep it that way and use that as a, you know, as part of the design limitations.
yeah, does anybody else have any questions in regard to this particular subject? Or something to add? Nope. I nope. You don't I, count. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> were you were you just do you just came in to say no? <laughs> Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, I did. <laughs> okay. I didn't mean to actually shut you shut you down. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I I appreciate it. I, I like that. That was good. Yeah. So yeah, moving on. What were some of the other topics that we had? Um, 10K was interested in going over ways to use breaks, uh, or at least. Yeah, yeah. How use, using breaks, whether it's chopping or ways to manipulate it, that kind of stuff. There's there's so many ways. There's so many ways, which is um. I really uh, I uh, did Tanke. Did you see uh Mikey's um. Uh, thing like what was that like last week or two weeks or four weeks ago, where you did that where you had a a loop but you had different effects of that same loop. Yeah, you know, was, I think it's like as a single file. Ago. Yeah, that was super I neat. May have missed it, but I, I can I go over it again. I mean, it's I don't want to do cover trodden ground. My my thing is mainly I always end up just changing the start number. Like that's 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 my method. But I I know I've seen Tim do some stuff with the loop function and having different loop points start and things like that. So I think there's there's two basic ways of doing like breaks and to, I guess we should define breaks. Breaks are a, a, like let's say a drum loop sample would be a break um, where the sample loops essentially um, or a can loop. Uh, there are a few ways of juggling where to start that loop right? There is the sample offset, um, the sample start offset parameter. There is putting the, the sample into a loop mode and adjusting the loop position. You could also use the slice method to slice up, slice it up into individual little parts. And there's combinations of all those things within. <laughs> so, it's kind of a wide topic. Uh, I wonder if I have any loops, unless Mikey wants to cover that or somebody else wants to show how they mess with that stuff. I can I, do I'm, it. I'm happy to showcase if you're wanting to take a break um, or if nobody else wants to uh, show something off. If you got a break, I, I say go for it because I, I would have to find one. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I think I'm pretty sure I have something set up. Uh, let me just open up a track. Uh, let's see here, and I'll share my screen in just a moment. Okay. Don't, don't share your screen. People will take your secrets. Oh, oh no. <laughs> they can try. All right. Give me a second here. I'm looking for. Well, this doesn't seem to see touch designer as an option. There uh -oh. it is. Nope, we got it. We got it. Okay. Screen should be shared. Yep. Uh, give me a second here. Okie dokie. Okay, here is a little DMV track that I played the other the other night. Um, volume check. It might be louder than I expect. Let's see. Is that too loud? Let me. It's fine. Let me tr turn it down just a little bit. Just for for me, not for you. Okay, so this uses a couple different breaks. Um, this is like the just your traditional think break and almond break going on here. So uh, my my method for breaks is very very rudimentary. It's like the most straightforward you could do, and that is using slices. Um, so I've got my my break uh, my my sample here, which yep. Uh, I think it's uh, oh it might not play because I already have it set up as slices. So let me just make a new one real quick. I'm just uh, just so you can hear it. Well, I can just play it, um, but a second here. 
the trough slices. So then I should be able to hear it. Okay. Yep. The old can't can't mess that one up. And yeah, I mean, uh, what's that sample? I, Where'd you get it? <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, that was uh, sarcasm. I know. I was trying to very, very nicely come up with a joke to respond, but I couldn't think of anything. Um, uh, one important, I think, an important thing to consider for for uh, nicely chopped breaks is to make sure that it's uh, cropped in a way that it uh, loops smoothly. I suppose um, this song in particular, you could divide it up, you, you, you know, in in some sort of increment of eight or or, or four, I guess, um, or power of two um, just to make sure everything is nice and even um, so that when you're slicing you're you're getting the transients since this has no means of transient detection um, you just kind of have to make sure everything's lined up right so when you cut it in half you know it's going to be at the halfway point of a perfect loop I guess I don't know if that made any sense I feel like I made that overly complicated in the way I explain that. Um, but taking that sample that we just looked at here, I've divided it into eight even slices. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's probably an easier way to do this um, uh, where you could just kind of uh, make it, use like an LFO or something to cycle through them. But uh, I am very into the steppy shuffling of samples uh, so uh, I'm able to just throw in a little just like that does that make sense uh, so I mean that's that's very very simple kind of break break chopping uh, and obviously um, effects this is a good time to, to try out some of the effects that you may or may not use often um, I find that uh, a lot for a lot of percussion stuff using the fine, the fine tune, so it's not so uh, drastic between you know the snare drum uh, between notes, so you get kind of a more natural sounding kind of drum, uh, as because you know if you were actually playing the drums, your your snare drum's not going to sound exactly the same every time, depending on how hard you're hitting it and all that good stuff. So it's a good way to add a little bit of variety. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Here's my uh, example of some almond break stuff. Whoop, yep, let's go and start from the top. My voice is already becoming hoarse. So I actually am using two different um, almond break samples here. One of them has the crash, so I just made a separate instrument for it just so I could get that crash. Um, Retriggers, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, I apologize for that. Uh, Retrigger is a perfect uh, command for breaks you're able to get things chopped and sounding cool really really fast so here uh, I'm using ju uh, actually just using regular pitch instead of fine pitch it probably actually uh, sound pretty cool if I were to swap them all over to fine but um, yeah it, it it's a it also it's sounds straightforward cool if you use uh, the vibrato. I keep pushing that. I think it's the oh, coolest like random yeah. little feature. <laughs> that that's something I should I should be doing more often. Is that that vibrato? Yeah. Um, I I don't know. I, it's I don't know what else to kind of show. I mean, it, you can't already tell. Yeah, and also uh, playback, super super cool. Um, you can. Um, on longer samples where you have a little bit more wiggle room, you can kind of, uh, instead of using like a ping pong, you can just drop PLY zero and ones and kind of arbitrarily scrub back and forth between like uh, the samples playback um, to a really cool effect. Um, I used it, I think I used it on some vocal samples uh, for a remix I did um, just to get some like really cool spacey sounds. Uh, let's see if I can find an example here. I'm definitely uh, stealing that technique. Yeah. That's, that's fun. Yeah. Uh, give me a second here. I think this the track. Attempt, don't worry, I'll try it. Uh, I think this track probably has some, some examples of this. Um, let's see here. Mm, not this one. I have. 
I'm just going to have to scrub through all these to find find one where I actually used the playback the example that I'm talking about. Could have sworn I used it in this track. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, like for here, I'll just play this section here. Just a voices. Oops. Let's try that again. Sorry. This is you just you just to scrub back through it and then instead of instead of time stretching, I'm just uh, in that one section where I know that sample is playing for a long time. Uh, rather than doing trying to do a time stretch, I just have it scrubbing back and forth using the 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 playback. So that that's exactly what I'm talking about. In, in context, it sounds really nice. And then, uh, sorry, I sorry. Uh, yeah, and more break stuff. And here you go. And again, this break um, has 16 different slices, um, and. Uh, Nothing too crazy, just some um, some chance and retrigger. So when it passes through this, it may be a little bit different each time. Yeah, uh, I hope that was what we were uh, wanting to wanting to see. I guess I could go over the other method. Yes, please, because uh, th this is this is the method I I do. So uh, I'd love to see how you're how you're doing it. Let me turn that on my really screen. Helpful. Thank you. Happy to help. Juggling here. Hold on. There we go. Hey, look, I have the same sample. I wonder how I achieved that. Sweet. Amazing. So I'm going to turn it on uh, for loop mode so that way. Hey, it loops perfectly. Um, and I'm going to turn on time, or do, turn on time stretching. I'm going to do the time stretching trick, which we went over before, which is setting the length of the loop to something absurdly small, assigning the LFO to loop start. I think this will work, right? Um, oscillator type will be ramp up, and the LFO will re-trigger on every new note. And some kind of frequency. I haven't done this in a long, a little while, so I don't know if this will work. But yeah, that's way too slow. Let's bring that down. Yeah. So now I got my kind of pseudo time stretch uh, note in here, and I could use the I think I could use the loop start command to juggle it. Yeah, you get the idea. Oops. And that doesn't work. Oh, because it's uh, relative, huh? So I need to put little things in here. get the idea though you could just juggle it this way versus using notes i think actually what works too maybe is let me try this just to be clear because i think i might have done this as a feature uh if we use start command instead of uh loop offset does that work or no no it doesn't Yeah, that doesn't work at all. Get 
the idea. Castle Tiles asks, is there a way to reverse a time-stretched break similar to a PLY01 command? I don't know. That's a good question. Let's try that. Um, so it'd be setting the play mode uh, to, to reverse loop, which is play mode 3. So... No. Uh, no, because you'd also have to set the, you'd also have to set the, uh, oscillator to ramp down, I think, to do that reverse, yeah. And at that point, we're kind of off into the weeds, I think. I mean, you could, you could duplicate the instrument, you know, create a new instrument that does a ramp down instead of a ramp up. Think that would work and then do a reverse mode for that one sample but yeah i guess that's a disadvantage of doing the quote unquote time stretch uh since the loop since what we're really doing is is slowly animating that loop start position on a really really tiny sample the ramp direction is what would do it does that answer the question i think so um another isn't there a multiple ways of doing this or slicing samples. Those are the two main ways I think over everything. Uh, you could also do you could also do slices and in time stretch mode. Um, and we I think we did some of that in previous meetups. But the only advantage I guess that uh, doing it this way has um, I think it's situational. I guess mainly the, uh, the way you did it with uh, using slices instead is uh, it's a little cleaner, I guess, with slices. Yeah, I, 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 I find it to be a little more crisp. Yeah, because obviously by juggling the... Uh, I mean, you don't have to do the time stretching. Like, you could turn all that off and set everything back to normal. And then you have to just set your song tempo to match the original tempo or repitch the sample. You could use the sa sample start command to. Yeah, so that that's uh, you know without the time stretching, it makes things a little bit simpler to edit, and it doesn't have the artifacts that the quote unquote time stretching does. Let's see, I'm gonna throw this in here just so I uh, can appease myself. I just put the vibrato in there just to play with it. It sounds really cool. It's like a pseudo ring mod kind of thing going on. Yeah. It. I think it would be useful for that. That. I think it was uh, a couple weeks ago where somebody was showing that voice sample that was with Sweet Deep Monic. I don't remember who. Oh yeah, that would come in handy. Uh, was that you or was that? Uh, I think it was. Uh, I I I I've done some. Uh, I think the specific instance was Felix. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, there we go. Thank you. I really appreciate you humoring humoring me on that one. Um, I wrote a whole bunch of stuff down. 
see what other what other random topics can we cover did anybody ask any questions or things met mate matey what's that thanks tom that's not a very useful topic to talk about <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should I could show a couple of tracks that were handed to me, um, if we want to do that. Yeah, I have a bunch of I have a bunch of uh, new finished music as well that I'd be happy to share. I think I sent you an unfinished song, and I have since finished it, um, or finished in big big quotes. It's like playable. Um, Castle Tiles ask. Uh, if we've gone over the rep command in previous meetups. I think I might have, but I could show that again if we want um, first or in between songs, maybe. Your uh, use of the rep command is the only reason I use it. Yeah, I mean, that was the original us usage of the rep, the reason why it was there in the beginning. So good. It's really, really good. Uh, and now that I have it, I'm, I'm using it. I guess I'll just show that really quickly, and then we could play some songs that people submitted. Does that sound yeah. okay? In fact, the, the whiff I had sent you says that on filters quite substantially. Yeah, so the rep command for a brief, let me just reset. A brief rehash, because I think I covered it before. I'm going to do macro synth here. I'm going to turn on a filter, and it's going to be quiet. because. So with the rep command, where is it? Rep. Repeat last effect in phrase. Repeat with the XX value until new command. And then table does something totally different. So we we were referring to phrase specifically here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, increase the cutoff over and over again. Here it's kind of steppy because at every step it's going to add zero d in this case over and over and over and over and even if you re-trigger the sample or the sorry the instrument it's going to do that and why that might be useful is if we assign a cutoff to an envelope And it'll just keep going. Um, I, I just cloned the, that pattern or that phrase because I'm going to delete it. And so in phrase zero, it has that command. And phrase one, it doesn't. Where, where did I mess up? Hmm. Oh, it's it's going so it's looping because it's going well well past the range of the cutoff. So there we go. Let's do that. So it's really good for doing uh, a change over a long series of 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 phrases like you would do in a typical DAW um, for like buildups or slowly modulating something over time without much effort. It'll just keep going until a new command is entered in here. So if you wanted to stop it at any point, you could put a rep zero. If you wanted to just stop it, not trigger anything else, that will that will stop it from It's no longer uh, increasing, or until and uh, you know some other command is is in here. Um, you can see I use that a lot actually in I use that in my demo songs, like even the more recent FM synth demo. Well, this is really loud, isn't it? So 
So in that in that phrase, there was a there was a second right here. You see, there's a volume command and a rep one. So this guy is slowly turning up. It was just a little subtle have it kind of build a little bit before I did this. And I used it in the original demo song I made. I'll turn down the volume a little bit. Where's it at? It's right here. So at the end of this. This track right here does that. Yeah, there's a cutoff and a rep. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, and then as a reminder, in table, that command works totally differently. It just repeats the last. Um, it repeats. Uh, so if I have a rep here. I'm, I'm certain we went over this. If I have a rep here, it'll repeat this column uh, over and over. It'll basically hold at this column and keep repeating it for this many number of times. So if I have it set to two, it'll repeat this command twice. Yeah, there you go. Hope that covers that. Oh, thank wow. you, Tim. Very the informative. Demos are still sick. What was that? The demos are still so sick. They're chip tune, man. <laughs> They're really good. Um, just for for uh, referencing, like I'm like, oh, how do I do the thing? Oh, I can just check that demo, and I'm sure that there's an example of this command being used. Yeah, there, there's a. Uh, this reminds me. I think in Renoise they have like. A bunch of tutorial songs, which I think would be killer to have in M8 as well. Um, at some point, that should happen. Yeah, I, I was, I, I want to kind of compile one of those for myself to share. That would be cool. Gloom's asked, is, "Is the demo in the bundles section of Discord?" I don't know if I ever posted the demo song. It just came with the original beta units, but I should probably bundle it and give it out if I haven't yet. Yeah, for headless users. Oh yeah. I guess we could play some tunes. Uh, Mikey, if you have something, I think I have two different songs. Um, I have one by Glooms and one by 10K as well. Sure. So um, whichever route we want to go. Uh, I could go ahead and go. Um, let me share the, share the screen so at least people can see what's going on. Uh, this is a collaborative track that I made with my good friend Boa Constructor. I played it on my stream. Um, it is a fun uh, 160 footworky kind of track. Um, it's very sample and FM heavy. Um, so whenever anyone expresses concern about whether or not the SD card can handle such and such samples, um, you know, it, it totally can and it, it works just fine. Um, let me get this shared if I can remember how to do it here. Um, yeah, uh, it's not entirely finished um it needs a bit of polishing it's a little smeary and messy but it's kind of sort of intentional and then, so I enjoy uh let me let me get that going and i'm going to turn my mic off so i can Good. Yeah. 
track thank you yeah it was amazing yeah we we put that together over the last like a uh, week or two um not too bad yeah really good boa seems to be, they picked up uh m8 very quickly being a an nano loop user which is pretty nice i mean uh, he, he he does a pretty extensive uh uh experience or history using lsdg as well oh, okay uh, so um, I just, it's a I little... just remember him from like nano loop stuff, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been sort of like kicking him to to get back into it because he's he was a bit rusty, but it seems like he's got it under control now. So, uh, yeah. Um, I have another little track. Um, if we have time, if not, if you all want to uh, show off the other other people's tracks first, uh, we could fine. alternate. Okay, that works. Just to make it a pain in the butt for us to switch back and forth. You got it. <laughs> I'm, I'm stopping right now, so you have to do it. Okay. I'm I'm committed to this now. And let me set this up. Oh, wrong screen. There we go. This is uh, a track by Glooms. Hopefully, I'm saying your name correctly. Um, on the street with dollar signs. Might be dollar, it might be streets. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> just while we keep some tight, you gonna make you all right. <laughs> That was great. I really love the Excellent. stereo stuff going on there. Uh, and hopefully some people are watching it on the uh, 
Twitch channel <laughs> to appreciate the stereo nature of that track. So you want to play a song? I would love to. All I right. would love to. Let me get that going. Uh, so this is, um, I told myself I wouldn't do it, <clears throat> excuse me, but I made a chip tune track. Um, I used, uh, I just, uh, for the LSDJ users out there, I'm going to play this track and I want you to tell me, um, percentage wise, how much of this track is sampled LSDJ. Um, that'll be a fun, a fun, uh, experiment. So this is just a little chip tune drum and bass kind of track that I put together. So, uh, I'll just get started. <laughs> was great right goes on yeah so uh so what what i what i hear let's see um i don't know what's sorry i gotta talk i, I can't mute this person okay uh, i just muted them I, okay. I muted him on my end okay so uh i think you can right click and eject them from the 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 voice chat too um all right uh what was i what was i saying oh yeah so we I, I posed the question how much of this was LSDJ and how much of this was M, the M8. Um, let's see, I had uh, a 10K guest. It was the noise uh, and the lead, the, the lead pulse is sampled. Um, channel five obviously is sampled. That's that was all my <laughs> my like drum my percussion stuff. Uh, 
So for this, uh, the, the samples I used uh, were for the base, uh, the saw base uh, for this sound here. For whatever, however particular reason, I couldn't get this specific tone, um, so I ended up just sampling it from the Game Boy. I imagine, I, I mean, uh, I hope in the future maybe there will be a way to, to draw some waveforms so that I could get a closer representation of the kind of tones, that I uh, specific Does overtones it, I'm looking for. Does that look, look like a triangle kind of wave? It, it's, a, it's a triangle. It's just a really, really gritty triangle. Um, I spent some time uh, in, the wave, in wave synth trying to get it to sound quite like this, but um, there's, there's um, this, this is a like a... Uh, a sawtooth that I drew by hand in LSDJ to get very specific kind of harmonics, mm. and uh, I was I was struggling to to replicate it, so I ended up just sampling it. So the bass there, um, the that wave uh, growl is not LSDJ. That is, uh, let me find the spot here. That is also the wave. Synth. Just a minute, everything is samples. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, and it's just a sine wave, and I'm just scrubbing through it, or not scrubbing through it. I'm just ramping up with a mult to get that sound, because and yeah, get that sound. Uh, the big difference between the way this sounds and LSDJ is um, like the the way it, the way it kind of growls is right, um, but it doesn't have in LSDJ. It has still has all the bottom end. Uh, I don't know exactly what I'm doing differently um, in terms. But in order to, to balance that out, I just have it paired with the bass, the actual bass synth here. So when they play together, it sounds correct. Um, I would love to try then, to duplicate some of these in M8 itself. Yeah, like, yeah. The, the, the growl with the bottom end kind of thing. Should be yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm sure I could have. <clears throat> you mean just on like a, with one with one instrument? Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you if you've Figure I, I mean, something I don't know out. If I can. It would just be a fun, you know. Those types yes. of tests are always pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you were right, Tom. The noise hats are in fact sampled. Um, I wanted. I, I made a, tw a a joke tweet um, about adding adding Game Boy hum for added warmth to my track. So you can uh, you can actually hear it on some of this. Uh, just. You can hear all that that noise, and yeah, I just use it for the hats. Um, the tone of the the noise is a little different. Um, uh, I couldn't again. Uh, it, you can get pretty nice sounding uh, noise hats using the wave synth, but uh, I wanted to get very specific sounds. And um, this track was made using an LSDJ reference. Um, the lead pulse is is in fact just the wave synth, and uh, Os I mean the the os mode works just like the wave the waveform selector and LSDJ, um, and it works. I mean it's entirely the same. I mean this is exactly how I'd write write these kind of melodies in LSDJ. It's like it's like one to one, so that's pretty cool. Exactly like it. Yeah, um, the arp the arps are also uh, just just wave synth. Yeah, um, and there's another ARP here, and there's this ARP. So this is why I was asking if we could do like do any kind of swing uh, using tables. Um, for this particular arpeggio, I use different ticks um, just to cycle through the notes at different speeds. So, uh, it's pretty subtle, but I, I, I really like the way it sounds. And then... Having this here, use it, having being able to use the tick zero while you still have free scrolling columns is super super powerful. Um, it's like my favorite, one of my favorite functions that M8 has. Um, I think, let's see, I think there was one particular sample. This one. Uh, no, it wasn't this sample. But uh, probably my fake seagull. It's just a pulse channel. Um, there was like one part of the track where I had to sample a, an LSDJ ARP um, to get the way the ARP pitch slide works. Um, it doesn't function the same way in M8. 
um, and I couldn't get it, and uh, I don't even remember where in the song I do it. It's got to be in here somewhere. Uh, uh, I'll have to look. I'll have to look for it. Um, I told you it's all samples. Yeah, yeah. But otherwise, <laughs> uh, most of it is the M8, um, and the accuracy is pretty damn scary. Um, and and it, it makes for a great um, almost two X LSDJ in one box kind of thing if you're trying to make complicated, cool chiptune stuff. Again, it's not normally it's not really what I'm trying to do, but I figured I would give it a a, a test to see how it come came out, and uh, I think it's pretty good and it's pretty convincing. Um, so yeah, that that's all I got. Uh, thank you. Give it a burl. <laughs> um, I think, uh, yeah, that that's kind of what I want to get into at some point is us uh, trying to replicate certain sounds of different synthesizers. I think it'd be fun. Uh, but yeah, obviously, this isn't a Game Boy emulator, so there's going to be a lot of different subtle differences between this and a and a Game Boy. I would say that like the majority of the, the subtle differences are probably only people who are pretty deep into their LSDJ life and know, you know, exactly like the kind of tone they're gonna get when they do like a noise sweep with LSDJ. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, like it is an LFSR, but it's a different implementation of an LFSR noise and it has a higher um, because I think the Game Boy has thirty-two or thirty-one um pitches, quote unquote, for the noise channel. I think. Um, and this obviously is just full range, so it's going to have a completely different kind of sound to it. Yeah. And yeah, the wave synth doesn't allow you to do custom shapes, so it looked like it looked like when you were showing that uh waveform, it had kind of some little gritty bits on the when it hits the the bottom wall for lack of a yep. better term um I'm like oh i wonder if i could do that with like maybe a flip mode and just uh amp of one you know to try to get that but i don't think it'd be the same still so maybe at some point i'll add a ability to do custom shapes i think that's on the, the future features list it's doable. That would be great. It's totally doable. It's just not done. All right. So uh, we're going to play a track by 10K. Let me set up and share my screen everywhere. I don't know what you want to call this, Tom. Art Blade. Is that the correct that name? Was, that was a work in progress pun for myself. <laughs> So here we go. Want for me, 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 want for me.
That was great. That was fun. Whoa. Hey, thank you. Lots of use of the your repeat commands in that channel eight. Pretty sure. If I'm I see a lot of kills. I'm big on kills. That's that FM synth thing that you were doing right yeah, yeah there's yeah, a make a really gross sound and uh just clone chains and change the repeat value and possibly reset it fm base 10k yeah i like to uh save out a starting point for for each thing so i don't have to remake the entire thing each time yeah that's super convenient Yay for loading and saving presets. It's a, it's a big vibe. The preset saving. Yeah, I should I should really use it, utilize it more. Uh, generally, I, I've been using it just for um, MIDI instrument configurations. It's super handy. So cool. I think that's um, I think that's pretty much the end of our little meetup. Uh, unless anybody has any questions or something they would want to share, um, the floor is open. Uh, disposable plant, disposable planet. Uh, yeah, you could send a bundle. Um, I could just have uh, Mikey talk while we wait. Yeah. Um, here, I'll. Uh, I, I forgot to put that Bossa Nova track uh, for waiting music. Uh, on this on this M8. I should port my crappy little cover of uh, Girl from Ipanema. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I think you should. I would love that. I'm in. I used to use it for, like, I used to have to load in, like, the second half of a live set. And then so on LSDJ, I made a little Girl from Ipanema <laughs> song. So it could just play that, like, while everything was loading up the next section of the music. <laughs> Um, I wonder if I have a very small demo I could play with while you're getting stuff set up. Unless you're nearly there. I'm not. I wasn't. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. But no. It's okay. Here. I'll. I'll just show everyone a little FM drum and bass thing. For me. Well, Ooh. you don't. You don't want to. You don't want to talk this entire time. Mm, nope. <laughs> Hold on a second. I have to uh, set up the. Stream. All right. You good? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'll just. I'll just play. This is. It's just. It's something I would. I uh, showed off on. Uh. Uh. 
Instagram not too long ago. So we'll just play this while um while Tim gets stuff set up. It's just a little Ooh, yeah. It's a little very, very simple FM synth here. Um, and then I have some breaks. FM synths at the same time. So if I just do it at the same time. This one. And then this one. Breaks. Nothing nothing fancy. That's it. That's it. Just just some some little loop fun. Um, kind of great. Yeah, I'm trying trying to get uh, more familiar with the FM synth, and turns out drum and bass is the perfect genre to make really cool aggressive bassy synth stuff with FM. Turns out. Yeah. I want to know. Uh, I want to see some of the stuff that um, what's their name has been doing. Uh, they've been posting in, in clips a bunch. Of like FM stuff that sounds fantastic. Um, Double Kago. Oh, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Tobo Kago. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Tobo Kago. Yeah. Something like that. Um, yeah, I, I I've been really uh, interested in what a lot of the Japan M8 users have been doing since uh, there's now a. Uh, since uh, there's documentation in Japanese, uh, thanks to Scythe, um, a lot of them are jumping on and trying out headless and coming up with some really cool um, creative sound stuff. That would explain the increase I noticed on Twitter the other day. Yep. S sorry, I'm still somewhat distracted. Uh, let me see here. Too yeah, that's, many that's... windows. I'm I'm good to start sharing a couple i got two you... different bundles excellent okay let me let me jump off um let's see hold on a second i'm getting things ready all right uh, this track is by Disposable Planet, I believe. That's what the song is. Yeah. Kit Cyber Z. Thank you. 
fucking on. Well, maybe that was a little too hard. <laughs> that was that was great. I love the ending. <laughs> that was I love that 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 cheeky sample at the end. That was great. <laughs> Yeah, there was like a section in that in that this track where I, I, I like looked away for two seconds and like that it's like everything kind of like like the tempo just kind of like swayed for a minute. And I at first I thought maybe like I was just losing like I had my signal dropped or something, but it was like it was somewhere towards one of the last bookmarks. I thought, ah, uh, well maybe it was do, the does, main volume animations. Was, Automations. I, I just I don't I don't know if it was if it was tem I thought it was tempo, not the not the gating part, but uh, maybe maybe disposable planet could could tell us. Uh, maybe maybe I was just hearing things. I I could have sworn there was a section in the song where like there was like this like weird tempo swing, like like it like like the tempo like was had like a little pendulum thing going on where it like got really fast and slowed way back down. Maybe that was just my stream exploding. Damn. Well, now I have a cool idea. Okay, okay, Tom heard it too. Okay. Like it, it almost sounded like Could the, the. Do I have permission was... to try to find it? I, mean, I don't <laughs> want to dig through some somebody, yeah, somebody yeah. else's track, you know, without their permission. It, it it it's a it's all good. Um, regardless, I got a really really cool idea that I'm going to steal. And um, see, you're not supposed to steal secrets. That's not the part <laughs> point of the stream. No, <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, I I would rather I'd rather figure it out for myself. I just wanted to hear the section. I again. assume it. I assume it's this part. Or yeah, I assume. It's, yeah, it was somewhere I, somewhere in there. The secrets are here, hidden. Hidden in the hexadecimal code. All right, we're going to move on to the next track. You're not allowed. You're not allowed to have these secrets. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Um, dis disposable planet. Um, if you if you have those recorded somewhere, please please forward it to me. I would love to listen and rack my brain around some of the cool shit you did this is uh these are the kind of exciting things that i've been looking forward to people showcasing because uh uh it's very very inspirational with like this cool new hardware software and like these kind of things are like the, the meat and potatoes that i get real stoked about so um i'm very excited the only thing i don't like about these um showcases is it reminds me of a, how bad of a reader I am, and B, like, I can't pronounce anybody's names in real life. So, Saludux, is that how they say your name? Can, can you hear me? Yeah. What? Barely. It's pronounced Saludux. Saludux. People, uh, people always say Pseudolux. So either one. I think I was close. I think I was close. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were closer than a lot of people. Though. Yeah, I did a thing. So, this is your song um, called Burn. I'm going to go ahead and play it. Unless you want to add anything to it before I hit play. I can't hear you. Oh well. I'm going to hit play.
Wow. <laughs> that was so damn good. I had so much fun with that. <laughs> Those stabs are killer. The whole track is killer. Like, I, 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 I want to, like, make real cool dance music like that. It's just, like, really, really clean, and it, and it comes off as, like, almost like a like very, like, minimal. But everything's just so tight. Ah! I, I don't know how to do that. It's so good. Uh, thanks, guys. It kind of uh, felt almost a satirical nature to it, too, which was humorous. Like, I was laughing kind of the whole time to that, the samples. <laughs> yeah, so it was a... um. Uh, it's kind of like an offshoot of Buildonix project. Uh, uh, DJ Wazo, Luria. We did a we did a uh, like hyper pop. Oh, it's square sound. Yeah, I I can I can hear the hyper pop influence yeah. in this. For so sure, it's kind of like a solo, a solo me Teledildonix track. I'll post the link in there. Thank you. Because it's, yeah, it's tons of that fun, ridiculous, yeah, whatever, whatever. Yeah, that that's going into my my bin of of tracks to play for other people. So thank you. The only the only problem is I I can't really think of anything to follow that up with more songs to make like that. <laughs> I need to get some like 80s workout gear. <laughs> it's kind of the vibe it had going on. Yeah, th it's uh, yeah, so it's, it's uh some booty music. Like <laughs> I just like want to wear like really tight spandex to that <laughs> and like lift weights. It's like exactly what it was made for. Like flexing muscles. Yeah, so if anybody has any questions or things to share, uh, let us know now. Um, else I'm going to, uh, we should probably end it unless uh, there's something to talk about. I got nothing. Yeah. I tried, I tried to think of something. I got nothing. I think uh, for the next one, I should really come up with some topics. So if anybody has any topics they they think of that would be really appreciative um as well maybe i could think about doing uh interviews um might be fun that was something that crossed my mind yesterday that that would be pretty pretty cool actually yeah so interviews um would uh I think I would love to have a more roundtable kind of discussion on at some point of like just general production of MA related production stuff. Just things you don't really we don't really go super in depth about, but like um, yeah, I agree. general things like mixing and uh, fine tuning things, like thinking talking about like headroom and that kind of stuff that um, can really help make tracks shine um, tonally as opposed to just uh, compositionally. I guess if that makes sense. Yep. I agree. I agree. It's, it's, There's just never enough time to properly plan these things out. <laughs> no, no, of course not. So, but uh, I think I really want to keep at it because it's helpful to some people out there and it's pretty neat to see what people can do with M8. So thanks everybody for joining in on the stream and hope to see you next time we do this. Maybe next week. Uh, at the very least, sometime this week, I'll, I'll post a poll or something so we could get kind of some ideas flowing. Sounds good. Yeah. Talk to you all soon. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Have a good afternoon, morning, night, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.